Hi, Pastor Kit here from Christ Church Anglican in Oshawa, but I'm sitting in a cave in Bowmanville. Well, it's kind of a cave. It's a, a ruin of a bridge next to a mill in uh, near the Bowmanville Creek. I want to be able to tell the story of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead, and the place he raised him from the dead was a cave, Lazarus Cave, Lazarus Tomb. This reading from John chapter 11 from scheduled for March 29th, the fifth Sunday in Lent, is really good timing. A lot of us are kind of trapped in our homes, which you might describe as a COVID-19 cave. Uh, it's not like the man cave where guys would go and uh, have some uh, entertainment and watch some live sports on TV because there is no live sports on TV. In fact, a lot of places are closed. So many entertainment places, movie theaters, places of worship, shopping malls, you can't even take a flight anywhere, and it causing some grief and some people feeling kind of stir crazy. So I thought this reading was perfect about Lazarus being raised from the dead from a cave to film it in a cave. So I think there are some things we can learn from this, and the Word of God is active and amazing to be able to do that. What we're let in on is this story of. Lazarus, who had two sisters named Martha and Mary, and when Lazarus gets sick, the two sisters send a message to Jesus, who's not near Bethany. He gets a message, and it was a little bit like getting a text message. He doesn't reply. Can you imagine sending a good friend a text message and they don't even reply? Jesus delays for two days. The disciples who were with him at the time say, well, why aren't you going back? And Jesus has three reasons. The first is that this will somehow be to God's glory kind of wondering about that, and then he eventually says, well, no, this is, uh, Lazarus is only asleep. And they're a little confused by that, and then eventually he says to them bluntly, Lazarus is dead. And I've delayed for two days, I'm paraphrasing now, but basically to let you know that I am God's son, that God has called me to something greater, some greater glory. And when he eventually does uh, show up in, uh, in Bethany, he goes to the graveyard, it's like his word has gone ahead of him into the cave. His word is already there. And when the two sisters come out and complain to him, well, you know, if you'd been here, you wouldn't have died. And you can hear their, their heart wrenching, their grief. And he, Jesus hears the, the mourners grieving. And, and he gets to the, eventually gets to the, the outside of the, the tomb, the cave. And he, he, can't, he can't stop himself from crying himself. It, it, we joke that it's the shortest verse in the Bible, John chapter 11, verse 35. Jesus wept, but there's nothing funny about it. He's grieving. And many of us, in our loneliness, in our homes, not being able to see our friends, except by electronic means, and not be able to go and do the things, go to school, or go to church, or go shopping the way we've done before, we're, we're feeling some of that grief and, and, and sadness ourselves. We're in the COVID-19 cave. And we need a savior, we need someone to get us out. And while we're still in the social isolation period and we're not allowed to get closer than six feet or two meters from people, the word of God comes into the cave, comes into our lives. The word of God is there to remind us that just as Jesus delayed, we're called to have patience. And that patience is a witness. It's a witness to our faith, it's a witness to our belief that we're doing the right thing around this pandemic, that that God will somehow bring a solution to our present set of, set of circumstances and bring healing and hope to people. In the midst of our grief and illness, there is hope. Not only to have patience, but to know the power of God is there in His Word to help us to overcome. And that's the first and, and important message from John 11. That God, through His Word, is giving glory, showing His glory by the power that works in us, by the Holy Spirit. And just as we hear this intimate moment of Father and Son, as Jesus prays, Father, I know that you always hear me. As we're let in on this holy moment, this intimacy between Father and Son and the glory of God at work, we're encouraged. We're encouraged to know that his word is with us in our cave, whatever set of circumstances we're facing. And that's such an important, encouraging message from God's word for us today. The second and fascinating part of this Gospel reading is why we've come here to the observation area near Darlington Provincial Park. We want to be able to show a bigger picture. As Lazarus 
was raised by Jesus out of the grave, he had to, someone had to move the stone out of the way. And the stone represents the law, just like the Ten Commandments were on, written on a stone. Jesus respects the law, he's a rabbi, he doesn't actually go and touch the dead body of Lazarus, but his voice, the voice of his command was such that he's able to speak life into Lazarus' dead body. The stone is rolled away, the stone representing the Old Testament, the old law, and Jesus is grace embodied. He's embodying grace, a new life. And just as we've heard the intimacies of Father and Son in his prayer, uh, that shows his heart, his love, not just for Lazarus, but for the whole of humanity. When he cries, he was crying out of grief that the whole world struggles with death and illness. And he wants to show us that there's something more for us in life. And if by our own efforts, we want to have patience, we want to try to deal with our grief and our being trapped in our homes or whatever the circumstances are that we are, by the grace of God, we might know that Jesus is there for us. It is just a question of our having to pick ourselves by our bootstraps. In fact, none, no efforts on our own would be able to earn us His grace. He simply gives us grace as a gift, a gift of new life. So if you're struggling with some kind of a grave of, of anxiety or addiction, or trouble forgiving someone, or whatever it might be, whatever your cave metaphorically might be, God is there for us in Christ. And as we recognize that we can only go so far, and He's gone the rest of the way, He's brought new life, that we can see the bigger picture, and see that our life actually is meant to be in a relationship with God in Christ. He desires that father and son, or father and daughter intimacy with us. He wants that for us so that we don't have to struggle on our own. It's said that life is only for love, and time is only that we may find God. It's my prayer that you may find God, and know that He will find you in the cave, wherever you are. That there's no thing that you've done, nothing that can't be forgiven. And He loves you, and He desires to have that relationship with you by faith. So if the Holy Spirit's speaking to you and you're looking for life in His name because you've tried everything out there and it's not working, God in Christ has worked the miracle for you too. That you might be freed from your cave and know life in His name. I'm, I'm tearing up, not because uh, I'm overly emotional about this, but there's a bit of a wind blowing out here. And I'm grateful that you've taken the time to hear this message.